Carolyn Doobie here. What's the play for today? Well, today I'm working in my art journal and I've got a background that I love. I mean, I really love this background and I'm gonna cover it up. Now, I don't know, you may have had some backgrounds that you've loved and have been nervous to cover up at some point. Well, there was a part of me that was freaking out that I was gonna cover it up. And well, spoiler alert here, yeah, it does get covered up. You're also gonna see me stencil using this little gizmo. This is a cool little roller stamp that gives a fun little effect with a stencil. So you're gonna see all this in today's play. Well, here's the page all nice and dry and you can see how I got to this point in the first video in part one and I'll have that link down below for you. But everything's dry, there's splatter, there's color everywhere. And now what? What do I do with it next? What should it become? Well, I decided I wanted some butterflies on this. And by isolating out, by using a mask, I'm gonna create a very, very different look to this than what you're seeing at the start. So I put one of the butterfly masks on there and then I'm bringing in some white paint and I'm pulling the white paint away from the mask. That way none of it runs underneath it and that way I'll have a nice crisp line. I'm just moving my fingers around so that I can get to the other side. But again, notice how I'm dragging it away from the stencil. That way it gives me the best shot at a crisp image. So if you've ever got a very busy background, using a mask is a great way to change the look of it. So now I've got a colorful, free feeling butterfly there on the page. And I forgot to mention the masks for this came from my Butterfly Journey stencil. This stencil comes with four masks of butterflies, the large ones, and they're available over at Stencil Girl Products. I chose three of the masks because, well, I like the number three. So I'm just gonna alternate those three butterflies all around the page. You might have noticed that I'm staying on one side of the page mostly. And the reason for that is I love this background. Not only is it colorful and fun, but it also reminds me of how good it felt when I let go of all of that stress as I was making the page. So I don't wanna completely cover it up. So I'm just covering, I'm just doing the butterflies around sort of that side. I'm gonna sneak them a little bit onto that side because well, a little bit of curve over, just a little bit. And this is me very, very gradually covering up that background. It was too much of a shock for my system to agree to cover up the whole thing except for the butterflies. But yeah, spoiler alert here, guess where this is gonna end up going. Now I didn't lightly cover up this background. In fact, it was really tough for me to do that. Because well, there was a conversation going on in my head as my logical left brain, the perfectionist in me was pleading, <laughs> begging, almost on hands and knees, don't cover it up with the paint until you're totally sure. Don't do it, you can never come back from this. Once you put that white paint on there, you'll never get that background back. The pleading, the begging, and I just had to laugh at how part of me was freaking out. If I've made one background that I love, I'll make another one that I love. What a great opportunity to throw some more paint around, right? And if I put that white paint all over it, if I cover up that background, what if I don't like it? Yeah, you know what I'm gonna say. I'll just say, oops, it's an outstanding opportunity presenting suddenly. Now you and I both know that when something doesn't go as planned, it's just an oops and it ends up turning out somewhere better. But my logical left brain, it's not so accepting of that idea and it was just in panic land. Now I've got an awful lot of white space that's about to happen here and I need to put something on that. I'm gonna end up putting a big old word on top of it. So I've given the background time to completely dry. You can tell by the lighting change, it's a little bit later in the day. I've put a piece of washi tape on here as my guide to keep me on a straight line. And the reason why I used washi tape is because it's a low tack. It's not as sticky a tape. That way it's not gonna pull the paint up when I'm done. So what I'm gonna be using to put the word on here is not paint or ink or anything like that. I'm gonna be using a rolling stamp. Now this stamp is one that you buy if you want for identity theft protection. So on any kind of sensitive data, if you roll this over, supposedly no one can read it or see it. I just think it makes an awesome way to create a word because you've got a bunch of random letters, symbols, that kind of thing on there. And so I'm gonna use it with a stencil. 
Now I know where I want the word to end and I can get one letter over there before the middle of the page where that fold is. So I'm gonna start with that one. Now the stencil that I'm using here is called Vintage Typewriter Alphabet Jumbo. And this technique does work best with a stencil that has a lot of open space. And I'm gonna hold the stencil in place. I've really gotta push it down where it's near the, cr the, the fold, the crack, the crevice, the spine, the middle of the page. And then I am simply going to roll this stamp right over where the stencil is. And anywhere where I'm not seeing it getting enough contact, I'm just gonna go over that area again. So that when I lift up the stencil, I've got this wonderful texture type right there inside making the letter. Now my spelling is not very impressive on a good day going forward. And if I have to spell backwards, yeah, what happens is, is I misspell words. So what I do to help myself is I just write it on a post-it note right there. And yeah, I even have to check off each letter as I go because if I don't do that, I've managed to misspell it even with the word right there. And then I'm just gonna bring that roller stamp in and I'm gonna go right over it. What I found is if I'm working horizontally or vertically, it tends to work best for me. So depending on the letter, sometimes I'll go more horizontal, sometimes I'll go more vertical. And in the smaller letters of, or smaller letters, smaller areas of the letters, you may have to go over it more than once. One of the things that I do like about this is because each time that I do it, it's got a slightly different look. Each letter is going to be unique depending on how many times I roll over it, et cetera, et cetera. And I like that variation. I like it that each letter has its own character. Now, how do you get one of these stamps? What are they called? I can't remember, but I have it all over on the blog. There'll be a link down below for you that'll take you right to the blog post for this video, and there'll be a complete supply list there for you. Now, once I finish up the last letter, I'm gonna gently pull up the washi tape, and none of the paint will be bothered. So I wanna put a little more definition on those letters, give them some edges, and also get a nice sketchy vibe to it. So I'm gonna take a pen and just loosely go around the outline of the letters. Now usually paint is pretty rough on pens. Even if the paint is completely dry, it doesn't mean it's completely safe for a pen. So if you do this, just know that you don't wanna use a $10,000 pen to do this because you are risking your pen just a little bit every time you put it on top of even dried paint. Now I'm willing to live on that edge and certain pens work better for it than other pens. This one is called a Feud Fud Fude, however you pronounce it, um, and it does very well over paint. It's a roller ball and it also gives me a nice solid black. Some of them end up being too soft or light and I'm really happy with this one. And yep, I'll have it linked for you over on the blog too. And so after doing the letters, I decided the butterflies needed a little extra something around them too. Now at this point, I did something that was not very mature. I basically went, I told you so, to that voice in my head that didn't wanna cover up the background that was so freaked out by the whole thing because where it ended up, yeah, I'm really happy with how these butterflies look going across the page. Well, thank you so much for joining me for today's play. If you've been enjoying this video, hit that subscribe button. That way you'll know as soon as I have a new video out. And if you've enjoyed this one, you know I'd so appreciate it if you gave it a thumbs up. Thanks so much for letting me be a part of your colorful journey. 